Welcome to Housekeeper's Half Hour. This is a reproduction of a radio show that was broadcasted by the United States Department of Agriculture in 1926. Disclaimer. Do not assume contents of this production reflect current scientific knowledge, policies, or practices. This show was originally broadcasted on March 8, 1926. What shall we have for dinner? If you have not discovered the possibilities of a casserole for making a dinner both delicious and easy to prepare, now is a good time to try it. An earthenware or glass baking dish with a close-fitting cover is desirable if you have one, especially if you intend to bring the casserole to the table. But if you wish to experiment first with this method of cooking and have no casserole, a heavy enamel or aluminum saucepan or even an iron pot with a tight cover can be used. In this case, the contents of the pan used for baking will, of course, have to be dished on a platter, which makes an extra piece to be washed. The casserole is a dish saver. A casserole dinner is one of the most satisfactory to serve to guests if you are both cook and hostess. It can be cooked in the morning and reheated at dinner time for half an hour or so. In this way, the housekeeper is free to finish the other details of her dinner and is spared that flustered and tired feeling that results from having too many last-minute foods on the fire. The meat or poultry cooked in a casserole, well-seasoned and accompanied by the right vegetables, will be unusually fine in flavor because of the long, slow, moist cooking in the covered dish. It is also ready to serve in pieces of convenient size without carving at the table, and this is sometimes a real boon to the one who has to do the carving. For our dinner today, we shall have a chicken on casserole, but the same combination of vegetables and the same method of preparation would be good with veal. If beef is used, tomato makes the gravy exceptionally appetizing and may be added with other meats, but the recipe that will be given in a few minutes will be found excellent without tomato. It is unnecessary to have a tender chicken. A stewing fowl or even a tough old rooster may be used. If you wish a first course of soup, it would be advisable to serve a tomato bouillon, which would add flavor, color, and vitamins to the menu. The casserole of chicken will be rather rich in itself, so a rich or filling soup is unnecessary. Flaky boiled rice is the perfect background for this tasty casserole chicken, and in a moment we will tell you how to cook it so that every grain is large, dry, and separate. Have salad if you want it but not a salad with mayonnaise dressing. Plain lettuce or lettuce with sliced beets and a rather acid French dressing would be better. If you like olives, you might pass them with such a salad. Or you can turn today's dessert, which is fruit cup, into a fruit salad with French dressing. Then dessert may be omitted entirely. It's a very good idea for the housekeeper who desires to emancipate herself from the endless round of elaborate puddings and pies to plan occasional dinners at which dessert is entirely missing. The family soon learns to be satisfied with simple fruits or no dessert course at all, and is really better off. The needed sweets in a day's food are usually eaten without any effort being made to supply them. What does into the fruit cup? Almost any fruits you happen to have or are able to get, but practically always some orange or grapefruit or both. The mild acid of an orange brings out the flavors of other fruits. Orange, banana, and apple, in equal proportions, is a combination available at any time, anywhere. Add to this, or substitute for part of it, a slice of pineapple, some leftover canned peaches or pears, cherries, apricots, a prune or two, dates, figs, with a few nut meats, perhaps, one or two, or any of these will make your fruit cup good. Berries in season may also be used. The fruit should be cut in small, attractive pieces, not larger than a raspberry, and they should not be stirred about even when you sweeten them, or they will look mushy and shapeless. Orange and grapefruit sections should be freed from white peel, seeds, and skin. If you have time and wish them to look very perfect, each section may be skinned separately, but a quicker way is to cut the fruit in half and take the pulp out with a spoon. Do not sweeten if the fruit mixture is to be used for salad. Otherwise, sprinkle lightly with sugar about an hour before dinner and set in the refrigerator to ripen and cool. 
I'll toss with a fork a little, if it is necessary to mix the sugar in thoroughly. Your menu is now complete. Tomato bouillon, chicken on casserole with vegetables, boiled rice, fruit cup, or salad. <laughs> Today's best recipes, ready with your notebooks and pencils now. Here are today's best recipes. The chances are that the oldest rooster will not be recognized in chicken casserole. Even the drumsticks will be tender, while the flavors of chicken and vegetables form a delicious blend. Sometimes this is called a dinner in one dish, but you will need to have rice or potatoes, plainly cooked, to complete it. Get a five-pound fowl or stewing chicken and cut it into pieces convenient for serving. With it, you will need three carrots, one onion, two stalks of celery, and a green pepper. The exact quantity of vegetables will, of course, depend on the size of the fowl and the casserole and the number of persons to be served. Allow plenty, however, for these are the vegetables for this dinner. If necessary, use a second casserole or covered vessel for cooking part of the chicken and vegetables. Slice or chop these vegetables into very small pieces. If you have a tin vegetable cutter, you can do this quickly. Dust the pieces of chicken with flour, salt, and pepper, and brown them delicately in a small quantity of fat. As each piece is removed from the frying pan, place it in the casserole. Then pour the chopped vegetables into the frying pan and let them absorb all the browned fat left from the chicken before placing them in the casserole. Add enough hot water to keep the mixture from sticking to the dish. Place the cover in position and cook in a slow oven for three to four hours or until the fowl is tender. Just before serving, remove the pieces of fowl and add to the vegetables a cup of milk which has been blended with one to half tablespoons of flour. Cook for ten minutes and pour this vegetable sauce over the chicken or replace the chicken in it and serve from the casserole. Veal may be used similarly. All skin and connecting tissue should be trimmed away, and before frying, each piece should be seasoned and sprinkled on both sides with a few drops of lemon and Worcestershire sauce. The other ingredients used with the chicken will be good with veal too. A great many people do not know how, how to cook rice properly. In fact, they have never tasted properly cooked rice or they would not tolerate the pasty mass that is often put on the table. There are two general ways of cooking rice so as to have the grains large, dry, and distinct from each other. By one method, all the water used is absorbed by the rice. By the other, the rice is boiled in a large quantity of water, which is drained off when the grains are tender. The latter method is easier because the rice requires less watching. First, Wash the rice thoroughly to remove all loose starch. A good rule is to wash rice through several waters or in a stream from the faucet until the water runs clear. Have ready a large kettle of boiling water, lightly salted. Four or five quarts of water to one cup of rice is the best proportion for flaky boiled rice. Drop the rice in slowly and allow it to boil rapidly for 20 to 30 minutes or until the grains are soft to the center when pressed between the thumb and forefinger. If it tends to stick, lift it from time to time with a fork, but do not stir the rice. That will break the grains and make the cooked rice pasty. As soon as it passes this test, take it off immediately and drain it in a colander. I'll cover the colander with a cloth and set it in the oven, or if the oven is not hot, set the colander over a saucepan of hot water on the hack of the stove and cover the colander with a cloth. This gives the rice grains a chance to dry off and swell to their utmost. If you have no suitable kettle that holds eight or five quarts of water, you can cook one cup of rice successfully in two quarts. Watch it carefully, and when you turn the cooked rice into the colander to drain, pour hot water through it to wash off the surplus starch that sticks to the grains. Then cover the colander and let the rice dry off and swell as already described. <laughs> Questions women are asking. Question. 
Why are coddled eggs good for children, and how should they be prepared? Answer. Eggs contain protein of a particularly valuable kind for building the bodies of children as well as chicks. The chick gradually absorbs the almost pure protein of the egg white as he develops within the shell. While children, however, make the best use of egg protein when it is slightly cooked. Protein is very sensitive to heat. If cooked rapidly at high temperature, it becomes tough and hard. Even if an egg is soft, boiled, that is, cooked in boiling water for three minutes, the white nearest the shell becomes hard while the rest of it remains runny and the yolk is practically raw. The coddled egg which is dropped into a vessel of water just under the boiling point, covered and removed immediately from the heat end, allowed to cook slowly for about eight minutes, has a tender, jelly-like white end, a soft but sufficiently cooked yolk. Scientists who have studied this question, however, found that not only are eggs more appetizing when cooked slowly in this way, out they are actually more readily and completely digested. Question. Can you suggest ways in which I can get my six-year-old daughter to take the milk I am sure she needs? Answer. Get some drugstore straws and let her sip her milk through one of these occasionally. Make a milkshake once in a while with fruit juice or cocoa as the flavoring. Also try milk vegetable soups. So many kinds of vegetables can be used in this way that you can get many different flavors. Cook her cereal in milk instead of water. Milk toast and a simple milk cereal pudding vary the monotony also. Make junket now and then with a flavoring she likes or serve it with crushed fresh or canned fruit. Custards, soft, baked, or boiled are another good way. Try all these methods of hiding the milk, but do not overwork anyone until the novelty wears off. Question. What foods can I include in my daily meals to supply iodine? Answer. Fish, particularly from salt water, oysters, clams, and other seafoods are among the best known sources of iodine among the common foods. In regions where a regular supply of seafoods is not readily available, iodine is being given in chocolate-flavored tablets and iodized table salt. Question. What is the best method of preserving sauerkraut when made in small quantities in the home? Answer. As soon as the kraut is fully fermented, pack in mason jars and cover either with the kraut brine, or if this is not possible, with a fresh brine made by adding one ounce of salt to a quart of water. I'll heat in a water bath until the center of the jar shows a temperature of about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, then seal tightly. If stored in a cool place, sauerkraut can by this method be preserved in good condition for a year or more. Question. What is insect powder? The powder obtained usually from drug stores for use about households for destroying flies, mosquitoes, and some other insects. Answer. Insect powder, sometimes called pyrethrum powder, consists of the finely powdered, dried flower heads of certain species of chrysanthemum. These flowers are grown to a small extent in California, but the bulk of our supply is imported from Japan and certain European countries bordering on the Mediterranean Sea. Well, during recent years, from one to three million dollars worth of these dried flowers have been imported annually to be ground into insect powder or used in some other way as an insecticide. These flowers are very similar in appearance to our common field daisy, or oxide daisy, which is also a species of chrysanthemum. The latter has no insecticidal action, however, but owing to its similarity in appearance and to its abundance and cheapness, the oxide daisy flowers have been quite extensively used in the past as an adulterant of insect powder. Owing to the activities of the Department of Agriculture, this form of adulteration of insect powder has been practically entirely stopped. Question. The burners on my gas stove are clogged. How shall I clean them? Answer. Take the burners out of their sockets and brush off all loose dirt. Then place them in a large kettle or pan that will not be injured by washing soda. Boil them for about half an hour in a mixture of half pound of washing soda added to each gallon of water. 
rinse and brush the burners, wipe them with paper or cotton waste, fit them into the stove, and dry them thoroughly by lighting the gas. Question. What is the best way to clean windows and glass? Answer. Either liquid or dry cleaners may be used. The most common liquid cleaners are clear water or water to which washing soda, borax, ammonia, kerosene, or alcohol has been added. The best general method is to dip a cloth in the liquid and wring it as dry as possible, then to wash the glass with this cloth using even, overlapping strokes, and dry it by rubbing briskly with paper, chamois, or cloth which has no lint. If the liquid dries without rubbing, the window will be streaked. On large windows, a quick method is to use water freely and wipe it off with a rubber squeegee drawn smoothly and evenly across the pane with overlapping strokes. Special care must be taken to protect the woodwork from water. For dry cleaning, whiting or a commercial powder of the same fineness is used. The powder is made into a paste with water or alcohol, applied thinly to the glass, allowed to dry thoroughly, and then rubbed off with a soft cloth or paper. This is an easy method of obtaining clear windows and is especially good to use in winter. It is also a good way of cleaning mirrors, picture glass, and the like, which might be injured by water. It is, however, a dusty process and should be used before cleaning a room. Well, this concludes this broadcasting of Housekeeper's Half Hour. I'm your host, Aunt Sammy. If you did indeed enjoy this broadcast, please consider listening to any of our other broadcasts. New shows are to be put out every week for new education and your listening pleasure. Until next time, remember to keep it tidy. This production was researched and produced by Breakaway Empire, LLC.